Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're talking about where the market has gone this past week so far, how everything the market's going in the coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you'll definitely want to subscribe. It's taken me uh, two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, lots of courses taken, lots of pain, but at the end of it, it's super worth it. So if you're not profitable yet, stick with it. And let's take a look at NASDAQ. So Basically, we did get the breakdown and then we have a good retracement up so far. If you saw my last video last week, uh, I basically drew this out because I was waiting for us to break these swing lows, which we did uh, two days ago, break the swing lows. Then I was looking for a fib retracement from high to low to get an entry on a short. And that came in first good entry be about 15,160. Uh, but I was looking for the 618 about 15,240. So I will say I am not in any shorts yet. Uh, shorting, targeting these uh, this 14,400 area. I'm really hesitant to get in short any shorts right now, even though the market structure is telling me it's okay to, because there's two days left until the end of the quarter and the long weekend for US. And I did some back testing. At typically end of quarter, there's some window dressing where funds are forced to buy. So could get pushed up into the end of the month and then Typically, going into long weekends, into holidays, the Friday is a bullish day. So, essentially, I'm waiting for near the end of Friday to potentially get in any shorts because there is potential for a squeeze to actually come from Thursday and Friday. So, if we do squeeze, the NASDAQ can easily go to 15300 uh, possibly higher, and uh, ES could easily go to this fair value gap at 4,440 to 4,460. So that's why I'm not in any shorts yet. I'm just watching. Um, obviously, if we start really breaking down and we don't get that end of quarter rally that I'm anticipating, then I'll get in some shorts. But for now, everything's looking great. This is exactly what I wanted to see. ES, I'm not looking for any shorts because if you just look left to right, uh, there's no lower swing lows. We just keep making higher swing lows. So Realistically, anyone looking for swings would want to swing this long here and actually be long 4,400 with a target of 4,500. NASDAQ, this is something I'm looking for because I think we can get down to 50% retracement, which is at 14,228. Let me show you the reasoning for this. If you go to the weekly chart, you'll see from this swing low, we went up about 20%. 20% from 19% from low to high and there's been no retracement. We just started to get a retracement and in from this low even is about 25% I believe. This low is 29% so we haven't had a real uh, pullback in 29% in a 29% rally on the NASDAQ. Combining that with the dollar, I have been paying attention to the dollar. If we just go over to the market structure of DXY this to me looks bullish. So we, we bottomed, we swept the low one more time and then boom, pushed up, broke this swing high, came down for a retest and are pushing back up. So to me, this looks really bullish for the dollar. Typically speaking, when the dollar is bullish, uh, NASDAQ is weaker. NASDAQ had an extreme rise, extreme rally, at least due for a significant pullback and retracement. So dollar, I'm expecting us obviously to trend up higher lows and higher highs getting to the 104 area, possibly getting all the way to the 105 area on the dollar. That's what I'm looking for there. And then on NASDAQ, we already saw, basically I'm expecting us to possibly get a squeeze into the end of quarter, end of week, and get up to about 15,280. Uh, if you just take a look, let's draw a fib retracement, like I said before, from the high to the low. I am expecting us to get up to 15,230 possibly as high as 15,337 by at some point, you know, tomorrow or Friday going into the long weekend. And then I think it's safe to get into shorts. Uh, even now, realistically, it's relatively safe. So all, all we would do if we were looking to short is get into short, put the stop above the current highs, and then target would be the next swing low. And that would be down at uh, 14,420. This is already a 2.2 R. So if you just see what's happening right there, that's already a good risk reward ratio. But like I said, with the back testing, I am expecting there's a possibility for a squeeze to continue for the next two days uh, into the, the long weekend. So I don't want to get in front of that. Uh, and I'm gonna wait till Friday and see where we end up. So the next video I'm gonna post is gonna be Sunday at 12 p.m. I'll do a recap of the week, but just know if we squeeze into Friday, but we can't break these highs. I'll, I'll be scaling to some shorts there on NASDAQ. 
my stop will be above the highs, and then I'll be targeting the next swing low at some point by mid-July. VIX has been extremely low. This is showing no fear. There's just showing nothing significant. The only thing going for, for people who are looking for to short is that the VIX pushed up and it filled the gap. So obviously, if you're thinking, you know, we just need to fill this gap before we could rise back up again, totally possible. But again, the VIX is super low. So this means that there's no real fear in the market, which means that there's, it's unlikely for a significant pullback or decline to take place. Here's the put to call ratio. So this is something I've looked at in the past to look for tops and bottoms. And typically every single time we get down to a really low put to call ratio, it marks a major top. Uh, there was the August top of 2022. There was the top of February 2nd, 2023. And then this was the top June 16th right here. It was a low in put to call ratio. This is the top so far for NASDAQ and S&P 500. I am expecting this put to call ratio to keep rising to about 1.0 and that would likely mark a bottom. So if, I personally think we'll keep correcting. This will keep rising until we get to about 1.0. Then we might bottom and start head, heading back up. However, I will say that uh, in previous bull markets, this has not been a good indicator because it can just come up a bit and then roll over immediately and go lower. In the in the bear market 2022, it, it marked all major tops by coming to this 0 0.8, 0 0.7 area and then rising again. But in bull markets, it can go a lot lower. It can go to 0.5. Are we in a bull market or a bear market? No one really knows. But theoretically speaking, of course, we're in a, in a short-term bull market right now because of just the higher lows, higher highs, and being significantly off the lows. So we're just paying attention. This is something I'm watching, and it's something that I like to see for us to potentially be a little more confident in shorting because we made new lows and had a significant push up and then pulled back a bit on the put-to-call ratio. So potentially decent risk reward for a short entry. Something else that you want to see if we're looking to short NASDAQ is the big tech stocks that have been leading the rally. Are they rolling over and breaking swing lows? So the issue, you know, Nvidia is still too strong to be confident in shorts because obviously I had the huge push up, uh, I had another push up and then just pulled back. And so far we're obviously below this higher low of 373. Same with Amazon, like we're just consistently going up. Nothing's really rolled over in the charts. So this kind of all points to no reason to be confident in a significant decline in the NASDAQ because these are all stocks that are in the NASDAQ. Previously, I had been paying attention to HYG, which is smart money flow. It's a high yield bond, corporate bonds. And there was a huge divergence going on. Basically, HYG had been making lower highs and SPX had been making higher highs. So I was using that to for my basis to short when SPX was around 4,200. Uh, I got stopped out and this divergence had continued to carry on. So. I've noticed this divergence typically does break in, in bull markets and it's broken in 2021 and 2020. So I think that it it's not something that it, we want to look at because there can it, this this divergence can just stay consistently. So let's we got to completely ignore that. Don't get confident looking at HYG basically is what I'm saying. RSB is the equal weight and it is the breadth. Previously when I showed this, uh, we were basically trending down right here and we were at this moment right here and I thought that we would sell off because the breath that discrepancy breath had a significant thrust up uh, obviously so did SPX and SP500 so I'm no I was obviously no longer looking at this because we did break the trend line and there's no reason to be confident in like a significant crash in the S&P 500 if breath is just going to continue to hold up here is the Nasdaq divided by the Russell which is the small caps and this is something I've been a I've been really surprised with. So this is the ratio between them and it's at 8.0, which means that the NASDAQ is eight times stronger than the Russell in terms of, of gains and relative strength. And you can see we've never been this extreme. You can see 2022, this was the top all time high right here. This is the ratio that's 7.3. This is back in the COVID uh, era after we've been rallying a bunch. And we have to go all the way back to 2000 to get to a ratio of eight. And this was the tech bubble. So. Since we are as extreme as the tech bubble, I thought that we would get a significant correction in the NASDAQ, not as extreme as what happened in 2000 because NASDAQ obviously sell, sold off over 50%, but I thought that we would get you know, a 10, maybe 20% even correction in the NASDAQ because of this ratio being so extreme, but it's been holding up for weeks. So, you know, again, another thing that uh, I thought would, would allow us to be confident in shorts, but so far holding up very strong and, and not really being confident that this is going to roll over anytime soon because it's been holding up for weeks. So a lot of people have been thinking that, oh, let me go long Russell RTY and let me short the NASDAQ. No, it hasn't worked out in the past 
weeks, as you can see, as we've just been still being stronger on the Nasdaq. Obviously, there'll be come, there'll come a point in time that this does end up working out. But as you can see, last time uh, about 2020, people probably thought here that this was this was extreme, and it kind of remained that way for like six months. So this looks super extreme, but maybe for six months, it stays up here. NASDAQ just consistently outperforms the Russell. So again, this is another reason why we don't wanna look at divergences and ratios as the end all be all, saying that, oh, it has to change or it has to crash, it has to correct because there's this divergence or that divergence, all the divergences lining up because all those divergences can stay for so long and then they can actually end up not correlating. And, and this happens, it, it, it happens. Things correlate for a while and then sometimes they stop correlating. So. We can't just rely on that and keep holding losses thinking that it's going to turn around tomorrow. It's going to turn around tomorrow. It's going to turn around tomorrow. This is why price action is a king at the end of the day. Personally, I took this awesome long today. I actually got in on the pullback and then I got in some ads as we sold off because it was close to my stop loss. Uh, target was above the swing high. So basically, uh, we, we opened up and Jerome Powell was speaking at 9.30. We chopped around. We dumped, made a low and swept all the lows from pre-market. And then we pushed up and we had a bullish market structure shift right here at about uh, 10 a.m. Then we pulled back. So once we pulled back into the fair value gap, that was my entry. And then uh, I saw this choppiness. We dumped a bit more and I actually added because it's relatively low risk to add very close to my own stop loss. And I had been confident that the, the bias for the day would be bullish. So, uh, that's why I got it long on ES, and uh, target was these swing highs recently over here at about 8, 8.30. It was about a two to one, got out, and then obviously it ripped up a lot more without me, but if that doesn't matter. Later we dumped and traded sideways. Anyways, uh, great two to one trade there, it was about 10 points on ES. And now I'm basically looking at the four hour on NASDAQ. Uh, obviously we have this wick here, so I think we might fill up, fill up this wick to get to 15,200. And then, I'm, like I said, I'm waiting for a possible squeeze to happen where we might get up to 15,300 by the end of the week. And then I'll, I'll reassess then because, as you can see, we making uh, we made a high, we broke this recent uh, swing low, in this one here, came up, got rejected, and made another lower low. This was great. This is what I needed to see. We came up, we pulled back, and then boom, broke this swing high. Now we have this other swing high intact. So, theoretically speaking, decent short opportunity targeting at least this next swing low, but I'm waiting because of what I said previously. Give the video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Let me know in the comments down below what you want to see more of. Thanks so much for watching and look out for that next video coming out Sunday at 12 p.m. Have a great weekend.